All right. Well, welcome everyone to the June um, ANC3C Safe, Sustainable, and Equitable Transportation Committee meeting. Uh, for those that this is the first time um, attending this, uh, we discuss basically here any transportation issues pertaining to the neighborhood. Um, we come up then come up with suggestions that the ANC can then take on. So no decisions are made at this meeting, but this is a place where you know community can engage, come up with ideas. Um, I think in a short time, we've already had quite a bit of successes with this committee. So I think it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Um, so we, the agenda today, um, and I'm gonna actually paste the, where I'm gonna be taking the minutes uh, into the chat so that people can look at them. There's really only two things on the agenda that, um, that I have. Uh, one is, um, the the folks on Rodman Street, well, a lot of folks who cross Reno Road Northwest via Rodman Street Northwest have requested a, um, a hawk signal or other safety measure to cross Reno Road. Um, there was an accident there on Monday. <coughs> so uh, we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a, so we already have a 311 request submitted and now um, we're trying to get a resolution together to, um, to actually the agency can support and then support uh, sort of the safe crossing over there. So that's one item on the agenda. Shouldn't take too long. Uh, the other item on the agenda is discussing pedestrian safety. This is supposed to be the pedestrian safety meeting. So we wanted to have a long discussion on that. Um, I have some survey results I can share uh, from the survey that the ANC did this week. Um, and so we can just discuss that, come up with some proactive ideas and plans and, uh, and see where we can go after that. Uh, those are the only two things I have. Does anyone have anything else they would like to discuss today? Swale, mm -hmm. it occurs to me that that left turn signal on Porter onto Connecticut Avenue when you're heading up the hill mm -hmm. is a nightmare. And I'm always worried a pedestrian is going to get hit in the crosswalk because you have like literally... 10 seconds from where it, you get the light, the, the left turn. Has that issue ever come up before? Yeah, so that that is um, what it is among the top 10 most dangerous intersections in DC. Uh, at okay. one point, it was the most dangerous intersection in DC. Um, in terms which of, one are we talking about? Uh, Porter and Connecticut. Connecticut. Nightmare. Really, Porter, Quebec, Connecticut. So. Every time we go to DDOT for that intersection, they say, well, once um, streetscape is done, that intersection will be much better and they'll have new timings and things like that. So they refuse to do anything on that intersection. Um, oh. But if there's if there's suggestions, I mean, I don't know if the traffic light timing is a suggestion, but there's something we can do. I mean, well, let me just ask you about this. Maybe you have some insight, Swally. Um, th this construction that's been going on on from like say Macomb where the library is to Quebec. It's just like something is just completely off with this. And I think that's increasing the danger. It just seems like it's just never ending. It's been going on, I think for years now. And it's just like, you know, I had the sense that, you know, they do one thing and then they realize, oh, we have to now revamp the utilities to revamp the utilities. And then that I, it, there's something just, Fun, I, I mean, I think there should be a, a, some kind of community meeting where, you know, the, whoever's responsible, presumably the Department of Public Works or something, comes and discusses what is going on, what the timeline for this construction is. It just, there's no information. No when I go to like a European say like London, if they do a project like this, there's very, a, a whole lot of signage about, this is what we're doing. This is the time frame. This is what it's going to look like when it's done. Nothing. I mean, there's absolutely no explanation or transparency about this project. And and you know, if it were just a few days, it'd be one thing. But it's leading to a lot of the dangerous uh, interaction with pedestrians. Yeah, this is Cassandra's nightmare. Um, yeah. Do you do you want to take this all area? Because <laughs> there's a lot going on up there. I think that's Washington Gas. Well, no. there's there's the several of the the projects that needed to happen, and in a sequence to allow for others to happen. Um, and there isn't there a, a meeting next week on it on the sixteenth. Yeah, That's on drainage, right? 
Yeah, um, I think that's on drainage. Yes, yeah, yeah. so that's the big one that's going on now. Um, but like several things had to happen with Washington Gas doing repairs um, and then Pepco coming in and having to do some pre-work to allow for this streetscape and stormwater drainage project to commence. Um, and that's the one that that's currently um, going on. And we did have them come by last month's CNC meeting, um, but, and it's, it's DDOT, um, that's the agency that's managing um, the, the contract. Um, and in my opinion, and I need to give them feedback on this, they um, didn't speak to what you wanted them to speak to, or, and they were more like, like how to do the project and people don't need to know how to do it. They need to know what it is, why it's being done and when, um, you know, like the, the timing and this, like what you're saying, the sequence and what it's gonna look like in the end. Yes, we should be putting signage up that isn't right. just like the politicians names of who like signed off on this, right? It should-, but, it should uh, Yeah, exactly. It should have, what the time frame is like in London, they would say, okay, we're now in phase three of five where we're doing X. In phase four, we're gonna do this and in phase five, and here's the time frame for all those steps. There's just nothing like that. I yeah, mean, and here's here's why we need to do it and not like, you know, how to do it yourself. <laughs> but I don't think they wanna put it there because I my sense is that they they don't have a, you know, I could use a swear word, but they don't have a clue uh, what they're doing. They have no idea when they're going to finish. They're, you know, what is one thing is lean. So they don't want to be transparent because that would reveal how how they're messing up. So they're going to do everything possible to hide all their screw ups from the public. I mean, you know, that's I think that's what's going on here. Um, that's absolutely true. I mean, so it's very little we can do. So we've tried having tons of meetings. Um, Cassandra actually tried to get, the only thing I'll add Warren to this to, to help explain a little bit better is there's different agencies like Cassandra is saying in the chat, there's Washington Gas, there's Pepco. And what's funny is they all just blame each other where, where I actually feel like Pepco is not which I forget one of them is not as bad. DDOT is the worst, obviously. Um, but they, they never, they never um, coordinate and and they refuse to coordinate and then the easy thing for them to do is well that's not us that's them that's not us that's them they asked us to do this first and so we tried that we had them over at meetings um it's it's unfortunately going to be a mess my my only hope is we just get this done as soon as possible so you know like it's the quicker they can move through like streetscape the quicker they can move through all like the quicker everything is is good and 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 yeah i agree with you it's totally totally annoying but and then there was also, I saw one time there was some like federal dollars being spent on Connecticut Avenue. Like there was also that, it's just. They put that on the sign. Yeah, they put that. Um, but you know what? Maybe there is the potential for us to ask them, tell them, suggest strongly that they do put the sign up because they do have to post the permits um, for the project on some sort of like board. Um, so along with that, maybe add a couple of, you know, inches or feet that like they can post that information to so folks can, you know, learn about it. And, and that gives a level of transparency, Warren, that you're, you know, saying we have the right as the public to, to have. We're paying for it. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks, Cassandra. So Cassandra said she would email that to Christian. That's that's great. I don't know if I don't. That'll be D dot. I don't know if Pepco and Washgas will will do the same. But um, you know, that'd be, a, that'd be an annoying thing. And do we have any sense of all that work is being coordinated or thought through in in light of the twenty twenty four construction of the protected bike lanes in Connecticut, or is this like you know just? <laughs> I think that's a separate project. Yeah, it's a separate yeah. project. And yeah, I mean, my limited experience in government is if they've started something, make them expedite it. As soon as we tell them, oh, you got to wait for that one, then nothing ever gets done. Oh, no, no, I don't want to suggest that. But yeah, yeah no, obviously we all want to get it done at this point, but I'm just saying that, you know. It's, yeah, no, fair this not. one is more for the, to solve more of like the stormwater, wastewater flooding um, than it is to solve um, like curb to curb 
roadway infrastructure issue and we have to fix the underground stuff before we can because <laughs> it's kind of like critical <laughs> so this is supposed to prevent uh, or obviate the need for the sandbags around the metros and that sort of thing yeah yes yeah it's to um one of the issues is to make bigger cisterns to to capture um more rainwater before it gets clogged up in the system and then starts to cause the yes other problems <laughs> sandra's just nodding along like yes i i, I do not want to row a boat down connecticut so <laughs> okay i'd make it a party boat but yes <laughs> fair <laughs> Cool. Um, awesome. And any other questions or thoughts or anything else anyone would like to discuss? Um, we want what's going to happen with Reno Road as far as do you think for safety? We live on Rodman Street, four houses up from Reno Road, and you, you can't cross there. I mean, and at rush hour, they always block it. I mean, they block it and if there's an ambulance or a fire engine or anything they just they just block it they don't care at least maybe a sign that says do not block like they have in maryland it's a mess um, well, well, well welcome to this meeting no please go ahead please go ahead Can thank you no, no, no. <laughs> we go well we live on a street that at the end of our street we have um a lot of schools which is mm -hmm. fine and the next block up from us, they have put in those bump, speed bump things because they, they fly through the neighborhood mm -hmm. dropping the kids off. And I mean, it's just, it's kind of scary for our children are grown and gone, but for mm -hmm. someone who's got young children, it, it's kind of frightening when you try to, you know, because they're just flying through the neighborhood. And I think between my husband and I, every time we go out, we see people just roll through every stop sign in our neighborhood. And I know people hate those cameras, but maybe that would slow things down. I don't know. You've got children here. You've got her school. You've got Sidwell friends. We're not too far from the cathedral. I mean, it's just, it, it's a lot, for, especially for people that have young children. And that can be frightening. Uh, Warren? Um, I would just say I'm okay with the idea of the um, hawk signals, but the, the abuses with those stop sign cameras is, is really beyond the pale. I mean, people are like, there's the one at Whitehaven at 37th Street that got publicity. There's another one across town where my daughter who goes to University of Maryland. Um, we've, she now avoids that intersection because she swears that she stopped at this place at Missouri and uh, I can't recall the cross street, but I mean, the, the cameras just are not working. All right. I mean, and there, and and it's it's really bad because I think I'm a great believer in automated, tra you know, automated traffic enforcement, and it's 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 cutting away at the entire support for the program. I mean, people aren't are understanding why they're getting two hundred dollar tickets as opposed to one hundred dollar tickets. Even one hundred dollar tickets seems way too much for the offense when you know you only get a $50 ticket for going like 50 in the 25 mile. I mean, that stop sign program should be gotten rid of, frankly. Because maybe that place they need a, a, maybe they need a traffic light there. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Maybe they need just traffic light. But if you live in Maryland or you live in Virginia, you don't have to pay anyway, so. Exactly, well, that's the other incredible. The other you know, they don't have to pay. We don't have yeah, rents. Well, D.C. is enforced. When I get a ticket in Maryland, which I have, D.C. enforces that. But yeah. they're not doing it the other way. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's so crazy. It's me. just crazy. Yeah, I know. But yeah, no, a light, a hog signal. I'm all in favor of it because it's all basically Maryland drivers taking their kids down to Washington International School and Moray and, and those schools in the morning. And, and I'm frankly sick of it. So yeah. I'm all in favor of it, yeah. Maybe a light, I don't know. Yeah, or so, oh, to, just to stop you down. Yeah, the hog signals, I, I posted about this in Cleveland Park Listserv. I mean, I almost got 
I almost got hit by a car at the intersection of, I think, Porter and Wisconsin or somewhere where there's a near there where there's a hawk signal in Wisconsin. I didn't realize, like, I was crossing the street when it was blinking, but cars aren't stopping for that. And I almost, I almost got hit recently. So I don't like the hawk signals very much. You know what? In, in some places, I remember years ago, years ago, when I was working downtown, there was this uh, traffic, there was a block where you had, um, it was where the old Woody's was. And when it said walk, everybody could walk. But when the traffic lights worked for the cars, you could not walk. And I just wonder if that's safer, rather than have anybody turn on red and all this other kind of stuff, just, just for safety's sake. I mean, I just remember then because I would catch the bus to come home and you would have, you know, it would say walk and you could walk across the street or diagonally or whatever you wanted to do. And once it came time for the cars, the cars went. So I don't, I don't know, but it's, it can be very frightening. I think that's why so many people in our neighborhood walk their children to school. Not that the kids can't get there on their own, but because of the traffic that comes through our neighborhood on our street because we're cut through. Totally, totally. So I don't know how to hijack your meeting, Swally. No, 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 no. This is, this is for the public, right? So, um, I mean, we hear all your frustrations. If you ask me and Commissioner Paggetts, we want to get rid of all the cars from the neighborhood. Um, like, get all... <laughs> Get, get like speed cameras, every type of camera and force them out, to, you know, do everything. Even a traffic like like you said um, is, is gonna be amazing. The, the, the hurdle that we're always up against is the District Department of Transportation that favors cars way too much. And so, uh, so, so George, just to give you some background what happened, a number of neighbors on Rodman Street, um, perhaps your neighbors, and, and, I'm, and my apologies if you were also already on that email list, they reached out and they talked about that intersection. Um, and they said, you know, like you said, there's kids crossing the street, there's lots of issues related to it. And so um, the, the speed humps on Rodman, for example, like it was the same process. Like they reached out to me, we, we actually like put in together the support. And so we're trying to do the same thing now to have them do something on that intersection. Um, I'm gonna paste the resolution in the chat that I have right now. And actually I love your idea of a do not block the box sign. Mm -hmm. um, I think that at least like kind of slows them down and like you know something like that because we didn't add that idea in there but there's not gonna they're not gonna put a traffic light there unfortunately um they it's just not that they have explicitly said no it's just to give you an idea when we asked for a hawk signal they were like it'll take us 130 days to just review the situation and then they might come back after 130 days and say we don't need it um i the other thing we asked for was a a four-way stop sign, just a stop sign. Um, they refuse that flat out. They're like, there cannot be a stop sign when two roads like that are intersecting. It doesn't matter what's going on. Um, and so this is like, this is, you know, this is frustrating for us as well. So we, what we're trying, what we're trying to do is we're trying to, you know, and I totally agree with you, Warren, I think Hawk signals aren't, you know, like that good, but at the same time, like right now, the only That's option is nothing. nothing, right? Like the only option is nothing or, or we try for a Hawk. And um, what I would want them to do is like, I love the do not block the box idea. I, I want them to do some other stuff. Like, you know, they, they can easily like do some traffic coming on Reno. Like I would advocate for like a, a small speed hump or something on Reno as they come up that road. But again, they refuse to put that because in some document that was released 14 years ago, they designated Reno road as a minor arterial, which means a speed hump can't go on Reno, which to me is- I think that's Porter Street too, because it's the ambulance- Porter is the same way. Please so I think the issue would be, but more practically, wouldn't you, I, some of you who live there would know better, but I would think you might have fire trucks using- oh, yeah, We do. I think, there's, I think there'd be some issues about- It uh, would be. Plus we've got all the embassies two blocks from our house. I don't care about them, but- <laughs> at the other end, so we kind of don't count, but it would just be- The best thing that ever happened when I was crossing that road one night, because I had a German shepherd and I would walk her at night and I was walking her and I was halfway across the street on uh, Reno Road and from, from where I live. And this guy didn't stop. And I was in the middle of the road with the dog. And I mean, I just, I, it was frightening. And yeah. so this guy went flying through. And the next person that came up was a cop, police officer. And he 
stopped and I went across and they put the sirens on and gave the guy a ticket. That was nice, but I don't think that's not usual. Every time you say, where is the police officer when you want one? This is one time in my life I had a yeah. police officer show up and he gave the guy a ticket because it was terrifying. I mean, this is flying down the road. It's like 930 at night. It's dark at 930 at night in the summer. So I don't know. But I think if we could get a big square there like they have on River Road where it says, do not block the box and a sign. Both directions do not block it because you can't get out of the neighborhood. Otherwise, you can't you can't get across the street. Mm -hmm. Not at rush hour, anyway. It's a really good idea. I think so. We'll add that, um, but I also pasted the resolution in there. Uh, you know, there's there's some other stuff I got from the neighbors um, about you know children and the schools are there and kids are crossing. So I'll add that. But if there's anything else that we should try and push for on Reno. Um, let me know. And if there are any suggestions about stuff, that'd be great too. I think the Hawk, at least the Hawk, if not a regular light, is the obvious solution. You, you're not going to get a speed hump there. Yeah. Um, I know <laughs> a quiet street where um, both Janelle and Swally helped me get at least a commitment. We don't have it yet uh, to the one on that will come in on Cortland Place hopefully in a month or two. I mean, a lot of my neighbors were like very concerned about the impact that this would have on police and fire and first responders. I mean, that's like a, a real thing that people have. So I just don't see it on Reno. But I don't think I'd want to be in an ambulance going over a speed bump on uh, my yeah. way to the hospital. I, mean, I don't really recall, frankly, <laughs> many fire trucks or anything on Reno, but I don't use it that often. I mean, I just that's my sense that they're not, they use Wisconsin and they use Connecticut. But no, uh, they use Reno a lot because they come up. Oh, from Connecticut and then go up Reno. Yeah, because there's not as much traffic and it's easier to get people to get out of the way at <coughs> certain times of the day. That's the only reason I think. I really don't know. But no, we've got they, plus we do have set routes. Yeah. Secret service at the top of the hill. So they're 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 active in our neighborhood too, which is good. I will say like ambulances and fire trucks by design are, are really resilient and can jump curbs. And like, like there's, there's a lot of thought that goes into, so yeah. I don't know. There's no, I guess there's no easy answer to any of it, but it would be nice to make it a little bit safer in the neighborhood. I think that's all people really want. Mm -hmm. The light seems like the obvious solution that won't, that won't prevent an ambulance. You know, <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Mm -mm. Traffic lights on all of those intersections, at least <laughs> somewhere. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's um and yeah, and, and the thing is, there are crashes there, right? Like, um, I looked up, there were fifteen crashes on that intersection, um, in the last five years. So, eventually, yeah. it's, it's going to be fatal. Um, cool. Okay, so we'll get that written up. Um, and then Georgia, as you have more, uh, uh, you know, suggestions, you feel free to email me. Um, and I'll get them added and then watch out for our meeting June 22nd, because that's where we'll hopefully vote on this. Um, and so we'll need to convince the other commissioners to, to vote with us um, on this thing. Who would oppose that? <laughs> I mean, uh, our ANC, you wouldn't be surprised, Warren. Um, the, the Rodman Street uh, speed humps, uh, Commissioner McWood didn't want to vote for them. Um, and so this, uh, the, there's, there's people on here that are, you know, they, they have their reasons. And so they might say like, no, it slows people down and stuff. And right. okay. so, yep. or sometimes it takes up a parking space too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. Um, Which I don't think there's a parking space on Reno, but I totally agree with you. Like if they do anything else, like, and it takes up a parking space, that might be also be a, a little bit of a. Well, yeah, on Cortland Place, that's the biggest biggest concern is how many parking spaces can be lost. And no one wants, of course, to speed hump in front of their house because it'll be in uh, <laughs> see. Yeah. like a game theory problem. Yeah. Whereas probably the safest thing is to have, well, I guess the safest thing is to have it, your house on either side so that wh whichever car is coming there, you're, you're, they're gonna slow down as soon as they get to your house. Yeah. Um, slow down, I can tell you that. We both had our cars hit in the last couple months. Mine was over $7,000 worth of damage. My yeah. husband was several thousand. And, they know, tore off the right, the, the, the they tore off the driver's side rear wheel. 
of my car. Oh, That's how hard it was hit. Fire, but the whole oh nobody stopped or would be nobody too left bad. delivery truck probably. And it never and stopped. It, it, our street is narrow, especially with all that construction. So I, I got my car back on Friday and my husband's car I went out the following Monday and I said you need to come outside. Somebody hit your car. <laughs> it's just like both of us. I mean, it's just, it's, it's because people go too fast through the neighborhood and it is, a, it's a narrow street. It's an old street. I mean, there's parking on both sides, but you know, between the two of us, we had $12,000 worth of damage to our two cars. Time to get a this came. time, this time, I yeah. mean, they've been, my car's been hit seven times and it's never been moving. Oh in the yeah. Seven times it's been hit. We should ban cars from your street. I think yes, so. I think you're right. <laughs> I think so. We should start with that. <laughs> I don't think I want to know what your insurance rate is. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to say what I, I think. <laughs> no, of course. Thank you for participating. I mean, this is, this is all, you know, sometimes it's a big meeting, sometimes small meeting, but this is <laughs> why this meeting happens. We, we were wanting to put like this because we want to change things. And honestly, the only way we can do it is with support from, from you all. So um, okay. that's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, cool. All right. So next on the agenda, um, I was thinking going over. So uh, just, to, just to let everyone know, we had a pedestrian survey. Um, of ANC3C that went out. Um, and I have some results from that survey uh, that I just wanted to go through today, maybe spark a conversation. I know at our last meeting, we talked about like, if we could have some time dedicated just to pedestrian safety. I know we've talked about that like right now for Rodman, but maybe we can have a general conversation. This can spark some conversation that we can continue on into the next meetings too. Uh, but I'm pasting the um presentation in the chat and i will also go ahead and share my screen so that we can go through it by the way while you're pulling that up swale are you thinking of sharing this with the pedestrian advisory council if you want to come over here that's a really good idea warren would that be like um like, would they welcome it? And like, how, what format would they like us to share? Well, you know, I'm the Ward 3 person on the Bike Advisory Council. And back in the day, pre-pandemic, we used to often have joint meetings with them and stuff. I mean, I, yeah, I think they would. Uh, we have, to be honest, we haven't done as much since the pandemic with them. Uh, but, you know, uh, we, do, we, we certainly try to coordinate with them. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good idea because I think there's also a survey that Mike did with CPCA, and so I think there's there's the opportunity to kind of like look at these two surveys, make kind of like general suggestions, um, to see what we could do. That's a great idea. Thank you, Warren. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. So here is our pedestrian survey results, and again, I didn't have a lot of time to go through these, but I just quickly tried to get the general view of uh, what was going on. So just to give you an idea of our respondents, this is where they come from. Um, you can actually see that close to 20% don't live in 3C, uh, which so it was a bunch of people from 3F, I think, um, you know, who come down to our neighborhood and, um, you know, and frequent here, which is good, you know, they, and I think Warren, your suggestion about like, where people frequent more often is, is more important than where they live. Like, you know, like people might live in a place, but if they're, if they're pedestrian somewhere else, that's good. So, so yeah, so that actually, that means like, like, 20% of people at least who responded to the survey are interested in pedestrian safety issues. Um, also got a lot from 3C09, um, not a lot from 3C05, well, actually, actually, I don't, actually, I think I'm reading this wrong. I'm sorry. I actually think this should be one, you know what, I don't know. I should, I should go back and look at this before I say this. But, <laughs> It could be 3C05 too, although I think that one might be, might, maybe that's smaller. So maybe 3C05 is 19.7%. I have to go back and look at the data. Um, but we got relatively good coverage uh, for our survey, which is nice. Um, and so which areas do you frequent the most as a pedestrian? Um, so the, the larger the words uh, means those are the more areas they frequent. So you can see Connecticut Avenue, People are at Cleveland Park quite a bit. Um, Wisconsin is pretty big. Van Ness, is a big, those are some of the people coming from the north. Eaton School, um, Main Street, which I think is really Connecticut Avenue. Uh, 
Um, some some people are Lowell, but 34th Street is a big one um, as well. So so you can see that there's there's obviously a focus here. Um, a lot of people on Ordway and Porter um, as well. So some of the survey results. Uh, in general, how safe do you feel as a pedestrian in Cleveland Park? So um, you can see that 17% say they feel very unsafe in the neighborhood and 40% say they feel somewhat unsafe. Um, and so that combines to almost like 60% of the people saying that they feel quite unsafe. Well, unfair, very unsafe or somewhat unsafe in the neighborhood. 40% said they, 38% said they feel fairly safe. Um, and then there's a very small percentage that actually said that they feel very, very safe. Um, and everyone had an opinion about this. So in general, pedestrian safety is an issue here. Um, so some broad pedestrian issues. Uh, I know this, this diagram might not be the best way to display this, but I can tell you the majority of the people were talking about speeding cars. Um, they were talking about speeding cars. They were talking about cars running red lights. That's why you can see red light everywhere. They were talking about cars turning right quite a bit. So like right turns where cars are doing it very, very quickly. Um, speeding, um, and, you know, crosswalk is here because I think some of the stuff we talked about where people don't respect the crosswalk. So there's a lot of that stuff in here. There's of course, um, as expected, the narrow, the, 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 the few scooter haters as well, um, which hopefully like once the bike lanes are done, we can get the scooters in the bike lane. Um, but you can see there's there's quite a bit of stuff about cars and 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 if you look at the survey results, people actually wrote quite rich opinions. So I think there's there's something to be said about going through those and, and reading those carefully beyond this just this diagram. Um, specific pedestrian hazards um, and and again this this might not be the best way to look at this, but again you can see Connecticut car porter traffic lights, dangerous intersection. Again there were lots of lots of thoughtful results here that that we can as a committee can kind of go over and we can read and and then Warren maybe even like have a more sort of you know better sharing um, of what's going on. Uh, any intersections stand out to you as being particularly safe as a pedestrian? So the most common answer was no. The other ones that people kind of said were safe were Macomb Street and Connecticut Avenue. That one to me is interesting because it's it, people said that like you can sort of see from from far away where people are coming and stuff like that. Um, Macomb and 34th was another one. So people in general felt safe around the Eaton School intersection. I think, you know, people, cars generally perhaps slow down and there's like nice four way traffic lights and, and again, right. the view and stuff is, is wide. And then Highland Place was another one that, uh, that a few people mentioned. Well, that's, that's really um, cool. Yeah, Cassandra, happy to actually, uh, yeah, once I'm done with this, Cassandra, I'll paste a link to the survey in the chat so people can look at the detailed answers too. Um, wonderful. Okay. Uh, and so do any inter intersections are troublesome, uh, dangerous or troublesome as a pedestrian? Um, and so you can see over here, Porter, that's a big one. We're talking about that. Um, Rodman is in there, Ordway, Lowell Street, um, Connecticut, obviously, drivers, uh, traffic. And so so this one, you know, we don't we don't see too much of the scooter stuff, but this is just talking about specific intersections and kind of what happens there. Cars not stopping in the crosswalk was another one. You can see construction also shows up over there as well. So that is I'm going to stop sharing, um, but I will also go in the in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and put in the link to um, some of the answers, and I've taken the names out of people so that. No one has to feel like we shared their uh, um, we shared their opinions, but let me go ahead and copy this link and I'll put it in the chat so you all can can see some of the um, some of the richness and the answers. Um, but yeah, I mean that that should prime us a little bit. But I kind of wanted to now open the floor up for people who have opinions, thoughts, any specific things they wanted to bring up, something that struck out to them. Well, one just one just sort of small micro thing. I thought it's, it's really interesting um, people's perceptions because your last slide, so all I showed that um, people identified Connecticut and Macomb Street as a particularly safe intersection. Uh -huh. That's not my experience at all. My, I mean, that's probably the intersection I use the most, at least in, the, in what I view as a high dangerous one. My, what I've observed is exact opposite is that people driving northbound, right? And they're trying to make a left 
onto Macomb. Mm. Uh, and they have to do it quickly because there's oncoming traffic going southbound on Connecticut. And God help you if you're, I, I, I fear that intersection. And I've, I've had some calls, I've seen others. I mean, drivers have to take that intersection very fast. And, and unlike say Connecticut and Devonshire, which is narrow, they can't like speed into Devonshire quite as quickly as they might Connecticut and Macomb. That's, I, that's not my experience at all. So it's just kind okay. of to say that, you know, people's perception of can can vary. Just, yeah. just funny. Yeah. Having your car murdered in like the past week at both of those intersections. Yeah. Somebody like broad daylight ran the light on the Devonshire on Connecticut Avenue and nearly murdered oh, yeah. me on a Saturday. And I was like, wow, that's Oof. not great. But yeah, when they're making that left on, they're not like with the pedestrians in the crosswalk, like they'll either get really aggressive or just like you have to dodge the car and it's scary. So yeah, that that is interesting to me because like sometimes drivers are polite and then other times it's like, Ugh. So this, this is actually a great conversation because I think um, one of the things is, is because we're doing that Connecticut Avenue redesign, there are gonna be some places where they're gonna put left turn pockets and it might be that Macomb and Connecticut is one of the obvious ones um, where they do it. I'm gonna just make a note of that. Alexandra? Um, have you seen the way that the crosswalk is set up at Irving and 14th? It's like a diagonal and um, a square at the same oh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I, you know, because I, our offices are in Columbia Heights and I drive, sorry, but I drive from Cleveland Park a lot. Um, it's, I'm always pleasantly surprised at how effective it is. Like all traffic stops, pedestrians can, can cross diagonally, they can go in a square and then like all of that just stops. And then the cars go again. And every time I drive through that junction, I'm amazed at there aren't drivers like trying to get through it. And mm -hmm. it, it, it works remarkably well. And I will say that I don't see any other intersection in this. And, and again, I'm, I'm really sorry, mm -hmm. but um, I drive. But and I, I don't see any other in intersection in the city that works as well as that one. And I feel like particularly at, we were back to Porter and um, Connecticut Avenue. I know there's the redesign coming up and things like that, but there's, you're going to still have similar issues. People are still going to want to turn left into Connecticut Avenue, mm -hmm. you know, and I wonder if something like that could be replicated there. It, you know, DDOT tends to like things that, that already, that they know and that mm -hmm. work and they're not, are not new. So maybe when they bring it in, anyway, all right, that's it. Well, but they don't work. And they're not that new. Like, I think this exactly, this is the exact thing Georgia was talking about with like all of the traffic stops. You can go diagonal, you, you can go every which way. Um, and the other thing, Cassandra, I know like you're all about like the, the public art and like the, the right of ways, right? This mm -hmm. is another opportunity where like you can put public art on that street and that's another traffic calming measure. Right. Where, where like you're brightening up that like this this is for people to and slow down right and it's it's a thing of beauty can be yeah I just yeah I guess my point was like I see it working in one yeah. part of the city mm -hmm. why can't it work in other parts of the city you know it really like go up there Irving and 14th right like behind the Target and the mm -hmm. Columbia Heights Metro. It is a thing of beauty to watch all cars just stop, people cross, and then cars go again. Mm -hmm. Remarkable. Yeah, Chinatown has that too. Um, yeah. I was going to say there, and I think that they had it at Connecticut and K. Like, oh, they did? Back when I first started working here like 12 years ago, I'm, I'm pretty sure like to the, the crossing to that square and stuff was like more dynamic than it is today that would be awesome like yeah i mean part of me is like they're gonna say connecticut is a two a four-lane road they're also gonna say irving is a one-way street they're gonna come up with all the excuses but there's no there's no harm in us asking um for 
software like this. But I think that's a good idea. It'd just be nice to see people not have to like run for their lives or worse, get hit. So. Yeah. Um, I, I get reminded of Tokyo. I don't know if any of you have been there, um, but they have crosswalks the same way on all their major streets. Like it just turns into like a, like the road turns into like a pedestrian, like just people fill the road up completely. Like kind of like how you're describing Cassandra. Uh, yeah, like, indeed, turn, turn DC into Tokyo. Um, Cool. Awesome. Other thoughts, other other ideas, other like things from the survey, any other pedestrian things that we should talk about? Um, um, so well, I think this is a great survey and I would like I would like people to really be vigilant once the construction swings from behind the target onto Connecticut Avenue. Um, you know, there were all those concerns from the elderly citizens about pedestrian safety on Connecticut Avenue. And so I want, um, if, if possible, to maybe revisit pedestrian safety once, you know, it starts, to, once the construction mm. moves into more of the pedestrian space yeah. out of alleys. No, that's a really good idea. And maybe we can be a little proactive here because um, when they start doing that, I'm sure they have some meeting or something. We say like, hey, last time you did this, all these pedestrian issues came up where like the pathway wasn't clear and this and this and this and and then make sure that none of that happens again. Um, it's a good idea. I mean, I mean, one thing to be a little optimistic about, though, is once we have the protected bike lanes, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just going to be a protection for the cyclists it's going to be huge for elderly and other slow walking people because you're going to go from a six lane crossing to just four lanes i saw like when my my mother deceased now but you know a couple of years ago god help us both when she was crossing 57th street in manhattan she just couldn't do it in time and like we were both at risk crossing the street and so it's going to be huge for connecticut when it's just four lanes to cross rather than six Yes, yeah, well, I think we want to bring up with that uh, team that's on that streetscape project and DDA in particular, um, making sure that they're evaluating the timers of the lights too, mm -hmm. so that we're not like not ignoring the fact that we're lessening lanes, right, of travel, and then cars are gonna like get blocked, and they're gonna start blocking the boxes, and then they're gonna you know, they, they need to holistically like look into if they need to change the timers on, on all of those, that sequence of light. And if they need to, yeah, extend um, the pedestrian signals in case they decide to overlook it and we have to like retro evaluate it. It's a good idea. Uh... There are always people that try to sneak in, you know, it's like, it's never enough time, right? It could be 10 seconds or five minutes and they sneak in. I wonder if, how can you, um, I mean, you all are more transportation experts than I am, but how can you, how can you discourage that? Or, I mean, how do you stop that? It's like, it's- Are you talking about pedestrians crossing? No, I'm talking about cars. Oh, like at the yellow light or something? Yeah, it's like no matter how much time you give cars to do things, they take more and more and more. So, well, you can't. Yeah, more for pedestrians too, mm -hmm. absolutely. But if, like, I, I'm downtown at Connecticut and L, right? So today I almost had to like try and hurdle over like a, a construction trailer that like got stuck on Connecticut in the crosswalk because the lights weren't timed properly. And oh. there's that backup from the previous light. So like nobody's getting through They're They're thinking they can get through and they end up like parked on Connecticut and L right in that, that, and it's, it's just a mess. And the simple solution is to, if you're doing construction, which they're doing downtown, just like time. just change a little bit of the timers of the lights so that the car counts are realistically being able to get into that queue, the next queue and the next queue, right? 
without blocking the intersection. Yes. It's yes. easier said probably than done. But I, mean, I guess my point is even if it is adjusted, they'll still take, they'll still try to get through, but you're right. I can only mitigate human behaviors uh, so much. <laughs> Um, the lights in Morocco are interesting. The yellow starts blinking so that you know that the red is coming up. I feel like in this country, the yellow kind of comes up and you're sort of caught by surprise and that causes people to speed up. But there you see it and you realize and you have time and then people slow down. So of course that would be a whole cultural shift that will never happen, but. Flashwood. Flashwood. Good. Good. <laughs> We're on the hill. We don't care. We don't have to worry about that. One thing we don't have to worry about. <laughs> Did you just get the notice? Yeah, I just got it. Is it a flash? Yeah. Is it yeah. raining? Well, it was. Oh, it was. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. Cool. Um, awesome. Well, there's, there's about 10 minutes left. I kind of wanted to come up with a game plan. Like, what do we want to see done with this, right? Like, there's different things I think we can do. Well, one, I think all of us can read through it and, and see like what other things stuck out to us. The other thing we can do is maybe identify key intersections or key parts of the neighborhood that we want to focus on, right? Like come up with a plan that for pedestrian safety, you know, like, and maybe some of the issues, right? Like for pedestrian safety, this is the bullet points the committee will try and be proactive on. Like, you know, Cassandra, you gave the idea of like before construction starts, right? Um, and then maybe we have some locations and some things set out. Um, what would be a good, a good next step that we can, we can do and kind of collectively work on? I mean, we're not, I mean, I'm not a transportation expert. Maybe you all are, but isn't this DJ's job to, to do this? So do we tell, My I know you're like, but do we tell them like, this is the concern. We're afraid someone's going to get hit by a car. You need to come out and figure this out. Or do we come up with what we think are solutions and tell them, and then they just say, thank you. I mean, what's, what, what is, how does this work? I'm new here, so. Well, my experience has been the DDOT, even though they are the experts, they're not the experts in pedestrian and bicycle safety, um, unfortunately. Like the ones they have there are really good, but like, I think we need to come up with a plan of like some sort of advocacy or being ready or something, you know what I mean? Like, even if we don't tell them this is what we do, we can at least point to a survey and say, hey, a bunch of people find this intersection very dangerous, right? Or our transportation committee raised this idea. What do you think? Like, get that as a starting point. Um, that's, I think, maybe the goal. I don't think we want to be transportation engineers here, uh, but at least like kind of have like, you know, a conversation started and, and let them know where the issues are. So I just saw, uh, I think it's 6B in conjunction with their sister ANC mm -hmm. is passing tonight, possibly a resolution to DDOT that just lists like a bunch of intersections and roads that they want traffic safety investigations done on because you know how DDOT just issued new guidance to us mm -hmm. on a couple of days ago, I guess, that they technically released on June 1st that goes with what they did in fall. Um, so I haven't dug through that yet, but I know, I feel like 6B or whichever one uh, did their homework on this, but like they keep telling us we need a resolution. We don't need a resolution. We do, we don't, let's just put it all in one and be like, we have the resolution. Here are the intersections. Like we want the traffic safety investigation. We have the support of the community the entire, you know, 3C commission, right? Mm -hmm. And do it that way. So it's not, we're not doing this bit by bit, piece by piece. And it's, it's, we're trying to do it holistically and giving them the opportunity to see that all of 3C wants this done holistically and not one-offs, right? Because no, I don't want to be a traffic safety engineer. <laughs> what about um, where the crosswalks are? What if they had some kind of illuminating the yeah, paint? Here it is. So that it's when cars see that they realize there's a crosswalk there. I mean, they're supposed to be. That's that's supposed to be part of if they're going in and repainting it. Yes, that's supposed to be it. But they need to have like the ticket 
to go in and like repaint it. Otherwise they won't do it for every intersection until like they do another thing that requires the three other things to be done, right? It's really frustrating <laughs> and it's like, no, I'll just go get the bucket of paint myself and, and do it myself. <laughs> well, I mean, and it would be one of the things that would, it would be a cheap, or I shouldn't say cheap, inexpensive sounds better, a way to, at least when we can't get other things, at least maybe perhaps we could get something like that so that yeah. you see that. I mean, there's certain places you drive. It's, uh, in California, they have it on the street so you know where there's a fire hydrant. And that's how you know it's there because this, there's this big line across the street. Firemen just, they don't have to look for a little ring around a fire hydrant. They just know where they are because it's, there's something illuminating. Well, why can't we just have that crosswalk so that at least it's a little bit better? I don't know. But I still think we need to have those block the box things because I just think that's, you know, otherwise it's, it's not good when fire engines, police, whatever need to get through and you can't, as I said, you can't get out of our neighborhood at rush hour unless you want to go the same direction as rush hour, which, you know, if it's going north, we can't do it. If it's going into town, we can do it from our street. Otherwise, you go down, get to Porter where you have a light and then you can do what you need to do. But you can't do it because it's blocked every day during the week. Well, I just put that in the Rodman resolution too, um, the Rodman regional resolution. If we can try and get some illuminating signs or illuminating like lights or something like at the crosswalk. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. So how about I propose this? How about at our next meeting, let's look through survey results and let's try and maybe come up with like major intersections. Um, and then maybe next meeting we can discuss and then, um, Janelle, if you see that resolution from 6B or something, I'll look for it too. But if you see that, maybe you can send it around and then maybe we can model something after that um, and then get something on the books to get some, start writing something. Um, and again, you know, this, this is, there's, you know, obviously like no pressure for us to do it by a certain date or whatever, but good to like start thinking about it. Yeah, um, we should partner with our, our, you know, sister ANCs on the, the North and the mm -hmm. West. Wes? <laughs> Swale and Janelle, I have a, a, a good friend who is, um, she's a real big wig in the transportation world. And um, I can also, I'm supposed to see her next week or the week after next. I can ask her for advice for how to get through to DDOT. Like what would be the best approach for these kinds of pedestrian safety issues um you know it, she speaks their language I don't speak their language you know so the only advice she's given me so far is pointing to things that they've already done is it's more likely for them to replicate than do anything new which is depressing <laughs> but um it seemed like good advice so yeah totally I mean we can use all the ideas we can get um, so please, thank you. Thank you for that. And I, I, I think that is good advice for to ask them to replicate stuff. Yeah. So that's what I try to do. When I see things in the city I like, I take pictures and I send them to DDOT and I go, can you do this? <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or don't do this, you know, mm -hmm. anyway. So. And then they do that. I like your carrot approach. I'm always whining <laughs> and complaining and there's some limits to that. So the idea of a positive reinforcement i like that <laughs> it's, it's it's i've just given up it's not positive i'm just exhausted so. by the way I may, if you're if we're meeting in july i'll probably have to miss that meeting just you know no worries we'll, we'll do we'll do offline you know information gathering as well um cool any any other last minute stuff anything else anyone wants to bring up um, I am meeting with the Commission of the uh, Arts and Humanities and DDOT on Friday to find out what this mysterious public art unfunded unknown thing in the renderings are. <laughs> I've been asking so many questions that they're just like, okay, we're going to have a meeting. I'm like, fine, fine. So whatever what? I find out, I'll let you know. What Unless time is that? I, do you, I can send you the invitation. Um, maybe 2.30, I think, on Friday. Does that work for you, Janelle? Possibly. I don't I'll know. Thank you. Yeah, I can see. 
Okay. I'd be interested in, in, yeah, because that's another thing that Cassandra, we can write a letter in support of the, the, if they're funding that through another grant, or you guys want to apply for the grant from that agency, like the ANC needs to, well, needs to, should, <laughs> and we can um, write a letter in support of that. And that's, that's, that's in our scope to do. So CAH told me that doing that, or I did have a conversation with her that that, so what happened for people who don't know is in the plans for the DDOT streetscape project, it has public art. It's like mentioned on a map or it's located on a map. So I was, you know, curious, what is this public art? What's it going to look like? So I reached out to DDOT and they said it's not funded. And then I reached out to Commission on Arts and the Humanities to see if that's something that the Main Street needed to apply for. And they told me that that their grants are really for um, entities that have an artist, they have an idea, like they're much further along in the process, right? And so um, then I reached back out to DDOT, who told me oh, just this runaround between agency and agency. Uh, DDOT told me that C uh, Commission on Arts and the Humanities was going to supply the art, they're going to plop it in, DDOT's going to install it. I was like, hooray. Well, Commission on Arts and Humanities said we're having a meeting. <laughs> so I don't know if it's a funded art. I don't know if anybody knows about it or if somebody just wrote it on a drawing and thought it would be a fun idea. I have absolutely no knowledge. Um, so yeah, I would love there to be art in Cleveland Park. So trying to find out what that meant, that means. But I'm happy to forward you the invites, Janelle. Cool. Awesome. Anything else? <laughs> all right. We're finished at eight. Perfect. Um, thanks all again for a great meeting. Um, thank you, Georgia, for joining. Thanks, Craig, for joining again. And uh, yeah, and we'll keep you all posted. And hopefully we can uh, get, some, get some better safety stuff done. Have a good great. night, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.